Hey guys, it's Pam and Bill at Country Living Newbie Custom Decor in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Welcome to Tuesday tutorial, hashtag paint with Pam and Bill. <laughs> so tonight we're going to be talking about all kinds of molds and appliques. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions and I did put up a um, little survey uh, probably last week sometime on our page about some things that you guys wanted to uh, learn more about and molds was one of the big ones. There were some other things there too, so we'll, we'll catch those at a later week, but tonight we're gonna talk about molds. Um, when you jump on, always let us know where you're from. What's back? I don't have that comment. When you cut and paste? Yeah. Hang on, guys. Should be there. Did okay. I not cut it? What, when you hold the, in the comment field? Nothing. That's all right. We were going to um, pin some of our links in one of the comments, but we'll add them after um, Sorry. In the description. Okay. Um, so yeah, when you come on, say hello, let us know where you're from, make sure you uh, check in with us so we know you're watching. As always, <coughs> do the things. <laughs> our goal is to try to get uh, 50 people on one of our lives. So that's kind of my goal. Um, hashtag goals, right? <laughs> we got Malia. Hey, Malia. <laughs> Yay. So that's why it's one of my goals. Malia, thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody named Megan Jordan. Hey, Megan. That's my daughter. She said, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, kind of have it in my head how this is going to play out tonight. It may play out totally differently. So we'll see. we got a lot to cover. Um, but one of the things we want to make sure we cover are some of the basics of making molds. Um, so number one, what are the different things you can make molds out of? The, so the, um, the resin, the modeling material, uh, is it a would you bend mold, um, paper clay, um, and there's different kinds of resin. So it's not only do you want to make it out of resin, but do you want the fast acting resin, the 24 hour resin, the eight hour resin, clear or white. So there's just so many options out there and it can get really confusing. So we're going to talk about resins. We're going to talk about Prima's, uh, redesign with Prima's modeling material. And then we're also going to do a would you bend, right? You guys are seeing a lot of stuff with would you bend now. They partnered up with Dixie Bell. Um, so if you have a local Dixie Bell retailer, check with them to see if they're going to be carrying the would you bend moldings. Now we're, um, we're a would you bend stockist by ourselves. So I get them right from would you bend over in the UK. We have, I think we're up to uh, about 70 different designs right now. So we'll put our link to order them. Once you see this, you are going to be addicted. Um, but would you bend may not be for everybody, right? So we're going to show you some other options. Um, this mirror, and uh, I put this morning on our page, I put the before picture. You may have seen our little, uh, our little pooch Callie on there and the photo bombing the mirror. But this was just a plain flat mirror. You made it look like a landing pad for a hospital helicopter. <laughs> I did tape it <laughs> off because I figured the mirror would be like completely <laughs> annoying in the camera. So, um... I started putting a few things on here because, you know, just time limitations, we're going to have to uh, do a couple things ahead of time. But this is the goal is to deck out this plain old mirror in all sorts of moldings, okay? A little bit of everything. So let's, um, let's start by going over the different uh, materials that you can make molds out of. Um, so one of the easiest ones. You want to show a mold first? Uh, yeah. So these are... The Redesign with Prima silicone molds, there are a ton of them, um, many, many of them. So there's florals, there's swags. Daniel says hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, guys. Please do the things, and let's see if we can get 50 people uh, watching tonight. Lots to learn about molds. Denise, um, Denise Quintana Sena. Hi, Denise. So these are, um, these are food grade uh, molds, so you can make candies and stuff out of them as well. They're silicone molds, they're super heavy duty, they are not going to break on you. Um, can you glue a candied mold to a mirror? Is that your question or somebody's That's question? mine. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay, right. so these are the molds that we're going to be working with tonight, outside of the would you bend ones. Um, so Redesign with Prima makes a modeling material. Um, it's a little different than paper clay. They also make a paper clay, which um, that's one material we're actually not going to do tonight. I find paper clay um, kind of hard to work with my, my fingers. They just, it, it puts cramps in my thumbs, to be honest with you. Um, 
Now there's some paper clays out there that are, that are a lot softer, um, but I like their modeling material. I like the, the texture of it. Is and that a I marshmallow? Like it's kind of, is that a marshmallow? It, I, it, yeah, and it kind of feels like a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't need to like work it like you do with paper clay to kind of get it soft. It just kind of starts out that way. Um, you kind of have the same issues, and you, they may be issues, they may not be to you, um, that you do with paper clay. There is some shrinkage that goes on with these. Um, there's a ton of ways you can do these guys. Um, you know, we'll talk about some. I may not hit them all, um, but if you have questions, let us know. Um, so when you take it out, I mean, I don't even really mess around with it a whole lot. I kind of just get it going on my mold. Let's, let's do one of the leaves here. And I just start pressing it in. And you want to start on one end and kind of work it. Oh, you know what I forgot? The little scraper tool. Darn it. So you want to start at one end and just start pushing it with your thumbs. Potty mouth. <laughs> I said darn it. I know. Or dang it, or something. <laughs> so I like to use, I have a little, um, it's like a little pottery tool, right? It's got the little metal round edge. Um, so, so that's helpful in cleaning up your edges. We don't have it tonight, so we're going to show you how to do it without that. But it's easy. This stuff is so easy to work with. Again, you can see I'm just pushing it off with my thumb. Removing the camera from the base. Cheryl Doak Day's watching. And Connie Cheryl. Collier. Dar Plants. Kayla Gregory. Hey guys, thanks for joining us tonight. So what are you doing? So I'm just pushing, so I'm using Prima's modeling material and right now it just comes in the big bucket, but they just released a smaller, um, a smaller size, which I will have on Friday. So if you don't want the big two pound bucket, or is it two pounds? Yeah, two pound bucket, you can get a smaller size. This goes a really long way. So as I'm getting it off the um, mold, I'm sticking it in my, my hand because I'm going to keep reusing. Now this is air dry, so you want to make sure when you stick it back in here that you take your wrapper and make it so there's no air in there, so your stuff doesn't dry out. Oh man, I wish I had that. So it's with easier with the tool, but... It is. Um, so with paper clay, you can uh, use a little spritzer bottle of water and it will help smooth out the 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 back of your mold. You can do that with this, but it doesn't, it doesn't work as well as it does with um, paper clay. So how do you want that surface to be? So you want to make sure, remember this is the back of the mold that's going to be, that's going to be on your, your project, right? So you want to make sure that this part is super flat. You don't want like a rounded edge um, or unevenness on there because it's not going to lay flat on your, on your project. So do the best you can. You can use a, um, like a scraper on here too. What do they call it? Like a... Putty knife or a spatula yeah. of some sort. I find when you do that sometimes, um, it can pull the material out of the mold though. So I, I really wish I had that tool. It but, takes a little practice. Yeah. But you'll, you'll figure out what works for you. And always clean your edges. Because the more you make them nice and clean here, the less uh, cleanup you're going to have to do when you take your mold out. So I'm just taking a wood craft stick right now. I've never actually used one before to do this, but it seems to be, <laughs> seems to be working pretty good. So take the craft stick and just run it over the top, just lightly. See, it kind of... Like completely over the top. Like, if it doesn't go smooth over the top, you know you have some high spots, and you can, oh, you can, see, you can see where the high spots yeah, are. Do you see it pulling? Yeah, yeah, and it pulls away, so yeah. you just have to be real careful. Yeah. It's kind of like working with concrete. And again, you can wet it. It will help smooth it out a little bit. I mean, don't soak it, but um, putting a little water on it does help. Lisa says, I find that working it as little as possible lends to, to less cracking. Yeah. And such. Yeah, that's a really good um, point, Lisa. So you're going to find there's some shrinkage and some cracking with this. And I think you're right. The less you kind of manipulate it, you know, kind of get it in there, smooth it out, and don't play with it a whole lot. Uh, I don't have to wet. And so, Julie Johnson from Melbourne, Australia. Awesome. My goodness, what time <laughs> is it there? <laughs> All right, so we're cleaning up these edges. 
And if I had the little metal scraper tool, uh, these would be a lot cleaner. So if you do a lot of these, it's probably not a bad idea to invest in one of them. So again, I'm gonna stick this in the, in the wrapper because I don't want it to get... Um... Now, this is not really a good example of a flat edge, <laughs> but um, it's getting kind of dry, so I don't want to keep uh, messing with it. But you can pop it out immediately, or you could leave it in for a little bit, doesn't matter. Now, do you see what happened here? My little edge didn't come out. If, if that happens, I usually just stick it back in, put another little, just a little dab over it. Press it down, clean it up again. And hopefully that will take care of it. Nancy Greco says, hi guys, a tad late. That's okay, we just got started. Shaz Conabier. So there it is. Very nice. So the detail on these are, are extraordinary. Now, there's a couple things you can do uh, with it now. So one other thing, and I, I knew I was doing this, I didn't really call attention to it, but sometimes in the middle of the mold, there's these little things that stick up to create uh, spaces in the mold. You really want those to show through to the back, okay? Because now there's no, there's no holes in the leaves. Do you see it? So, uh, do you have your little yeah. exacto knife or? So you can clean this up. A little tweezer or something. You know, just by kind of sticking this in there. So we'll just kind of poke some holes in there, good to go. So with the modeling material molds, at this point, you can let it dry itself, uh, let it air dry. Um, if you do, I recommend putting like a book or something on top of it, just to weigh it down and keep it flat, because it will tend to curl. Now, that's, that's a great way to keep it flat, but remember, it needs air to dry. So if you have a book on top of it, it's not getting the air, so it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. Um, so, you know, you gotta kind of weigh the benefit of how long you wanna wait. Um, you can also immediately put your glue on here and stick it on. You don't have to wait. Um, you can immediately paint it if you want, or you can paint it when it's dry. Um, you know, I recommend trying, try it both ways. It'll look a little different depending uh, what you do. So let's just, Somebody named Susie Smith is watching. Get to work, Susie. <laughs> I'm sure she's at work. <laughs> she is. She told me she'd be watching from work. Okay. So this is um, this is Dixie Bell's caviar paint here. This is actually their gel stain, but we're going to use the paint. So you can absolutely go ahead and paint it while it's wet. And you might, as it dries, uh, you know, you might get some cracks in there and it kind of gives it a nice distressed look. You can also go back in and touch up the cracks. So if there's, you know, the white cracks start showing, no biggie, just touch them up. But you'll find with the modeling material, you get more of an aged uh, kind of vintage -y look than if you go with resin, which we'll show you in just a second. Julie asks, would the book squish the design details on top though? It, it doesn't. So um, these are pretty sturdy. Like I would really have to like smush it to get rid of the detail. And I'm not saying put like... 150 pound book. Don't put your, yeah, don't put like the Encyclopedia Britannica on it or anything, but <laughs> you know, yeah, you can... It's just gotta be enough weight just to keep it from curling up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had, I don't know, 20 or 30 molds I made at one time and I just laid them all out and I just put a bunch of hardcover books on and they were absolutely fine. They're, they're pretty darn sturdy. So let me show you the difference in the uh, modeling material mold. So this is it when it dries. So it turns a, a darker white. So you see the bend in this one. So this one, I didn't have flat. So it bent a little bit. And look at, 
Uh, where is it? Sorry, my chair. Okay, so these are the same exact molds. This one is made with resin. This one's made with modeling material. So the resin is super slick and smooth, non-porous, and no shrinking, okay? The modeling material shrunk a little bit, uh, it did bend a little bit, and it's, it's porous. So you can, this is actually wax on here, the, the modeling material one, you can uh, put like a, a gel stain on, and it will actually suck in to the material. If you put, uh, where is it? Uh, 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 uh. I had so many little sample things, I know I'd be like, where's what? Okay. So if you put a gel stain on a resin mold, do you see what happens? It's very non-porous, so it almost just kind of glazed over yeah, it. It almost looks like a glaze. Yeah, super pretty, but this is the exact same stain. This is the um, Black Magic Voodoo Gel Stain. One on modeling material, one on resin. Okay, so this one is buildable, right? If I kept going over it, it would just keep getting darker. And th this one just stays a little more opaque. All right, so what happens, question from Kayla, what happens if you use the clay and leave it in the mold? Or are you supposed to take them out of the mold before they set? You, you can do either. I've never let it set all the way. I know people do, um, but I've never left it in there for more than like, say, 30 minutes. Um, it'll still be... Uh, fairly flexible yeah. with 30 minutes, so It'll you can pop it out. It'll also still shrink. Yeah, you're still going to get bend. some. Still going to get some shrinkage. Um, and you kind of have to experiment with these um, and kind of see what they do because <laughs> some, sometimes you'll get a lot of shrinkage, sometimes you won't, and it may just be because you glued it on it when it was wet, or you waited until it was dry, or you painted it when it was wet versus when it was dry. They always act a little bit different. Um, and it's, it's clay, you know, it's very little little clay, so you, you can play and experiment. It's not going to cost a fortune to learn. Yeah, yeah, this is... Um, Thank you, Gail. <laughs> what are we thanking? Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know when we're up to 50, guys. We want to see 50 people on here. <laughs> we have a way to go? A, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Um, All right, another question. Does yeah. it mess them up? if it shrinks while in the mold. What do you mean, does it mess them it, up? I so think it, it'll still warp and like pull away from the mold once it starts to dry in the mold. Yeah. So you still need to like lay something on top of it. And I'll show you if it does do this, I'm gonna show you it's not, all is not lost if it, if it does this. Cause we actually have one that we're gonna put on that looks like this. So I want to show you too. So we showed you the difference in staining or um, using the gel stain on these. This is this is painting. So when you paint a resin mold, um, it looks they look about the same. This one might be what a little more, a little more shiny maybe. Now that my hands all over it, but painting them they kind of act the same. And then this has some gilding wax over it. So not a whole lot of difference with painting, but definitely a difference when staining. And here's another. So these are the same. You can see it's starting to kind of dull up a little bit, but these are the same material. This one's just dry. It's a lot whiter than this one. So that is your uh, modeling material. And whether you use modeling material or paper clay, they, they kind of act in the same way. And then again, you want to make sure, you know, keep it. Keep it uh, airtight in there so it doesn't dry out on you. Because you'll have little marshmallow-shaped rocks <laughs> if it dries out. <laughs> well, that may be good in some spots, maybe not so much in others. Okay. Kayla says, I've been scared to use these. Now I'm excited. Yeah, don't Yay! be scared. Just jump into it. Yay! Okay, so let's show you. Now here's what you need to be scared this about. This chair no. <laughs> is so noisy. Sorry, guys. Hang on. It's like so distracting. All right. Uh, yeah, if you want to be scared, now is the time to be scared. Now is the time. No. <laughs> okay, so let's put these away. Now, there's a couple different kinds of resins, and I, I have two of them here. There's actually another one that we couldn't find. Um, do you see this real pretty? Look at this pretty clear mold. The detail is crazy good. 
and it's uh, it's a clear it's a clear resin. You have to watch when you buy resins because some are clear and some are white. So this one, nice and flat, nice and straight. This one Real says nice. turns white and cures in ten minutes. So that's this one. Okay. I need to put this camera back on the tripod and lower the tripod. But look at all the detail in these resin molds. Yeah. Just beautiful. Yep. And you're not going to get shrinking or cracking with the resin. Okay, but remember, this is this is white. So if you... We could go on and on about other ways to use resin. Um, but if you're going to tint your resin with... Um, with some dye or some mica powder or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to use the clear. So this resin is the epoxy resin that you always hear about that's super stinky, right? It's t it, it smells horrible while it's drying. Um, they're all two-part resins. So there's always the, um, what are the two? One's like the resin part or the epoxy. And one's a catalyst. And one's a catalyst. So there's always an A and a B when you're mixing resins and we'll talk about that. But these clear ones, um, if it drops, gonna break, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this one, I don't know. I'm afraid to drop it. I've never dropped one of these. Are we using it? Yeah. All right, then yeah. we're not gonna experiment on it. <laughs> Here, drop one of these. Drop, drop that one. <laughs> oh God, no, don't break. <laughs> drop it on the Nope. Okay, so that was, that was the amazing resin, the, the, the fast acting, which we're going to show you. So much more durable than this epoxy resin, okay? Um, and these take 24, 48 hours to cure up. So if you are on a time crunch, um, you don't want to use Not these. Not a good idea. And it'll tell you on here. So we started these last night at 6.30. And let's put that away. This is the two-part coating and casting resin. So also with resins, there are some that are mainly just for casting, right? Like this white one. And there are some that are clear that you can also put a clear coat on top of things. So for example, you wouldn't want to clear coat something with white resin, <laughs> right? So this one just says, and we're getting into the weeds, I know, but there's so many questions about this. This one just says casting. Right? You only want to use it to make your, your, your molds. You don't want to use it to clear coat anything. This one says clear coating and casting. Okay, so you can use it for your, your molds, but I made these little coasters with my new found, um, <laughs> my new found hobby with alcohol inks. And it's just a, it's a tile coaster. And I did these with alcohol inks, but you have to seal them. So we basically, last night we poured clear resin over them. So now they're rock hard. Um, you can kind of see the resin on the bottom there that we have to clean up. But pe when you see like resin jewelry, when people make that real pretty jewelry with a little dried flower in it, this is what they're, what they're using. So just always- It's just, also the same material that you use on top of table tops for restaurants. Yeah, the, it's like that super hard clear coating that you see. So just, you know, make sure you read the box, number one, on what it's used for. Number two, how long is it going to take to cure up? Because if you need to put it on your piece tonight, you can't get some of these. Um, so Robin asks, um, is it hard to get bubbles out of clear? So. Now, if you're making a mold and you're going to, if you're using the cast resin and you're going to paint it, it really doesn't matter if you get little bubbles inside. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a pour like this or you're leaving it, you know, let's say you're not painting it or, or whatever, um, the, the long, the, the resin that takes a really long time to cure, like this one, um, you got like no bubbles. Like you had no problem with that, right? No, that was, that was no bubbles whatsoever. But this one we have, so here's one we did last night. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a ton of bubbles in it. So this is the, that's this one, which is a 24 to 48 hour. And there, you know, there's a couple things you can do to prevent that. Um, this was the first time I ever used this one. And so you need to mix it slowly. You need to pour it slowly. Um, 
but we're painting this, so I didn't really, I didn't really care. We didn't if there care. Were bubbles yeah. in it. But yeah, that's a challenge with some of these. Doing some research on how to do the like if when we do the pour over a piece, like the tile. It, it's said that you can heat them up with a little torch, not hot, not very hot, just you know, just enough Bring to to get torch. a little get a little heat on there, and it disperses those bubbles. Now, if they're on the surface, you can also take a toothpick and just kind of pop those bubbles and bring them to the surface. And we're gonna pour one, which we should probably, we always do this. I know we talk a lot, guys, but I, I, I think it's important to talk about, you know, how to do these things. Um, so these we did at 6.30 last night. So it's been just uh, 24 hours. It does say 24 to 48, and it depends on the thickness of the mold, the surface area of the mold, but you can kind of tell, I'm taking this out. It is, um, it is rock hard, okay? Like I can bend it, I can bend the mold, pop it right out. And it's kind of misleading because it looks clear in there and there's like no bubbles. But when you take it out, it's more, a little more opaque. Translucent. And there's a, there's a whole lot of bubbles in there. But let me show you. Um, but again, look at that nice flat bottom. Looks like a mountain range from here. <laughs> <laughs> so these you don't have to be as careful with. I will say too, let me tell, look. This mold, these two molds right here are for me, and maybe you all are better than, than I am, and that's uh, totally possible. Um, I cannot use the modeling material or paper clay in these. It doesn't come out. This is so thin. It, it never comes out in one piece for me. So if you have a real thin mold that you're using, it's to me, the resin is the better, is the better way to go because you just, you cannot get them out without it coming apart. Now you could glue it together. It's not a big deal, but I just, I can't. So anything that's real delicate like that, I think you're better off uh, doing the resin. So, and I wanna get poured, but I wanna show you. Here, so here's the difference. This is the same mold, no shrinkage at all. You see they're exactly the same size. And that's these two different um, resins. The white one is the super fast, uh, amazing resin that is five minutes and done. And the other one is the 24 to 48 hour one. Okay, so let's, let us. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna do one. It's like, shut up, Pam, right. and do one. Jeez, can we get on with it? <laughs> For Pete's sake. So, and just to kind of show you, I mean, this one is like real thin. Hey, Helen. Right? You can see how, how delicate it is, but it, it has no problem coming out with the resin. Where, yeah, you'd have to be really careful if it was clay. Oh, if that was clay, forget it. It would, that little, all the little nubs would be sticking in the mold. It's just really hard to get those detailed ones, for me anyway. You might have a knack for it, but I mean, they're just super pretty. Okay, let's, um, let's see, let's pour. I don't want to keep doing that one. That would good there. Let's do that one. Let's do a big one. I've never done one this big with the, with the resin, so we're just gonna do it. So it's uh, one of the learning curves with, uh, with the resin is knowing how much to mix up and knowing how much will uh, fill your mold. So you don't wanna like run out, but you don't wanna have a ton of extra. So what I have learned is I always keep a mold set aside as an extra, just in case I have extra resin that I wanna use up, because you don't wanna waste it. It's, I mean, it's not real cheap stuff. Um, so uh, where did we where did we buy the molds, or where can someone else the, buy the molds? These are Redesign with Prima molds, so you can go to their Redesign with Prima website and hit find a retailer. A lot of Dixie Belle retailers carry carry them, and we carry a ton of them. So we're a Redesign with Prima retailer, a Dixie Belle retailer, and a Would You Bend retailer. So we have a ton of these products. And we, we're gonna um, we're gonna post we're gonna post our link after this. Yep. Um, so we're going to start, we're going to start with this amazing resin. So this is the super fast resin. Um, you're going to want to practice with this one or two times. Okay. Don't mix a whole lot of this. I actually mixed one, 
uh, and I made a lovely pa uh, plastic cup mold. It dried <laughs> on me so fast, and I did. I left this on purpose. Once it dries on these cups, look, you just peel it off, so you can never mix in a paper cup. Uh, styro or styrofoam. 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 Too, styrofoam. Yeah. It, when you mix this, it gets hot. It's a chemical reaction, so it actually it it feels very hot in your hand. All right. So I always label my cups A and B. It doesn't matter what cup you use, but there's always an A and B when you're mixing resin. So if you're going to be reusing your cups, just make sure you, you label them. So I do that. And sometimes they come with these little medicine cups. So if you're reusing them, just relabel them, or just make sure you, la you label them. Okay. Dana Harris is watching. Hey, Dana. All right, so we're going to start. There is no Dana, only Zool. Goodness gracious. All right, uh... Ghostbusters. Thank you. All right, so we have a couple craft sticks <laughs> that we're going to use to mix. Always read the instructions. It'll tell you you need to mix it for two to three minutes or, you know, 30 seconds or whatever you got to mix it for. It will also tell you your open time. So this one um, is super quick. Forget, I think it's on the inside. Yeah, the instructions. So they always come with instructions. Uh, you have like two minutes with this. After two minutes, it is turning white and it is not pouring. So um, you got to work quick. So here's your A and B. So they're always labeled A and B. That's why you label your, your cups. So this mold here, if you mix an ounce of each, you will fill this entire mold. So you don't, you don't need a lot. Like you, it, it really just kind of spreads out. But, but again, it's a little bit of experimentation, just knowing how much. And this has no smell. So the one, the one that takes uh, longer. This has... stuff, this stuff doesn't expand or anything. So if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to try to get the exact amount, you could fill. See how many little one ounce cups it takes to fill each one of these with water. And then you, you would know exactly how much each one of these takes. So we're just going to do an ounce. We're going to do an ounce of each. It's very important. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're off, you're going to have issues with your, um, your mold. And I mix the caps up. I mean, if you're off by a minute, it's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah, but don't, you know, get it absolutely as close as you can. Like one and a half to one ounce, that's going to be an issue. <laughs> There's definitely a difference. Um, so the A, which is what? Uh, doesn't tell you which one's which. The A part, the clear one on these, is very thick. It's like a, it's very kind of gelatinous. And then the B part is thinner. The B part is usually the catalyst. And just to be sure. And you can you can sit them there. Nothing's going to happen until you mix them. <laughs> yeah, this is safe so right now. Make sure everything is ready to go <laughs> before you add the two together. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what are we going to do? I don't know if I want to do that big one, I'm afraid. Should we do the big one? I think it's enough. Uh, it probably is. I mean, if this takes... You know, if this is two ounces. Yeah. All right. That's the so, same size. You'll probably have a little bit of excess. So remember, this is the fast one. Okay. We don't have much time. Always scrape the edge, right? Because you it'll stick a little bit. Try to get as much as possible out of the cup into the other cup. And with the fast one, you want to mix it for about thirty seconds until it's um, there's no streaks. And it's, it's a uh, consistent color. Make sure you have your toothpick ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can already feel it getting warm. That's a good sign that the reaction is taking place. Should have done a countdown. I, lo I wasn't counting. You're almost at 30 seconds. Oh, it's getting really warm. <laughs> All right, you may wanna. 
May I third? You think? Gotta be. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Is it a consistent color? As yeah. long as it's a consistent color, you're good. Yeah. All right, so then we're gonna start pouring. We're gonna start on one end. You wanna make sure you're pouring on a flat surface because you don't want it all going down into one end. Now I'm gonna take the camera out of the tripod, sorry, but I'm gonna try to get a little close. And I think this surface is a little tilted towards you. Yeah, working on a flat surface is it's pretty oh. imperative. Yeah. And don't pour too fast. This takes some practice. Like I over poured <coughs> big time the first time. You need a little bit oh, in the middle. No, no that's good. Just yeah, right I think here, it just. It... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa. And it's ruined. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put you back on the tripod and I'm gonna lift the table edge up just a tad. I'm gonna go right here. And let's do one more. I want to show them um, how this gets thick where you can't, when you know not to pour it anymore. If you over pour and you go to wipe it off, you're going to pull your whole uh, mold out. So if you, if you over pour, there's not uh, a whole lot you can do to fix it. Wow, this is like so hot, that cup. And I'm actually lifting up the table with some wood to try to make it a more flat surface. All right, I want to show this, come here. So look, do you see it turning white? Off the tripod again. So it's drying and it's already in my cup. If I was to pour this now. It's too late. It's too late, it's too late. So don't don't even try. Uh, so this is probably not going to work out well when I do this, but let's see. Ooh, we still got a it little might. time. It's still, there. it's still not. There you go. So a where bit more. where it's not white, you can kind of play a little bit. So you'll want this to sit for five to 10 minutes and you'll know once it's all white, you can start um, getting ready to lift it off. Uh, I don't wanna do, we're not gonna have time to do the other one. I wanna do the would you bend. Okay. So, um, so again, this is the amazing resin. Uh, it works in five to 10 minutes. It's white and you do not have much time. You gotta work quick, but don't, don't, um, if you get panicky, you're going to start over pouring and it's going to be a mess. So always plan, excuse me, always plan on doing one as a practice and then, um, you know, it'll get easier each time. Amy O'Connor says hi. Hey, Amy. To both of us. Wow. <laughs> she knows now. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how sensitive you are and how your feelings get hurt. Nancy asks Amy. Do you have time to paint? I've seen you on every live this past week. Amy, Amy is, Amy, girl, she's on like everybody's everywhere. She's probably know. painting as she's, she's watching. So, so amazing. <laughs> All right. All right, what are we doing? So now we're going to do the Would You Bend one. Um, and we are getting, what are we, we got at? time, 20 minutes. Okay. So um, before we do that, uh, we get asked a lot, what, do you, what kind of glue do you use for all this stuff? So you can use a wood glue on any of these. Um, would you bend is different. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. But for the resin, for the um, the modeling material, you can use a wood glue. Just remember that wood glue um, it acts differently on would you bend. But wood glue on a resin or paper clay mold takes a little time <clears throat> to dry. So it doesn't like you know adhere in like seconds, right? It, it's gonna move around a little bit, so just be careful with that. Um, you can use E6000, but the same thing with E6000 is it's a 24 hour cure time, so you can put maybe like a couple dabs of hot glue just to get it stuck, and also put your E6000 on there for the long term. Now I like to use, for, for my resin and 
paper clay or a modeling material, I use this mixed media glue. Um, it's on this piece right here. It adheres super fast. Now this broke. I think this is probably the one that you broke, honey. No, I think I broke the other one. You broke a different one? Yeah. Okay. If they break, guys, don't don't fret. They're still good. You just glue them together. It's not a big deal. And they'll break, believe me, because they're going to drop. They're going to... You know what? But yeah, I like this mixed media glue. It's clear. It's a little... Um, ugh, good grief. It's a little uh, rubbery. So sometimes it wants to like come off as you're putting it on, you see, kind of, it's kind of rubbery, but just get it all around. My tip is clogged, so it's taken. See, I told you that <laughs> you're going to drop them. They're going to break. Make sure you get those edges and then. Right up there, good to go. And make sure, you know, if you're worried about the the stuff that seeps out around the edge, make sure you get that pretty quickly. Not too worried about it because we're painting. And what are you using to do that? This is a baby wipe. Okay, so that is gonna stick there. All right, would you bend? So I'll put our link for would you bend in there. <laughs> Um, these are um, new molds that you're going to be seeing quite a lot of. Dixie Bell and Would You Bend um, have partnered up, so uh, some of your retailers will be carrying these. I think they're offering 30 plus designs from Dixie Bell. There are over 400, so um, we're an actual Would You Bend stockist, so we're going to carry much more than the 37 that Dixie Bell offered um, or offers. Uh, they're all different shapes, all different sizes. They are a wood composite, they're all natural, uh, and they act like any other piece of wood, okay? When they're um, not heated up, they, uh, you'll hear it referred like in their cold state, they're very brittle, so they can, they can snap. In fact, my, the delivery I just got today, or when was it, yesterday, day before, um, this one was broke, which it's not a big deal, I forget how it goes. Um, if they do that, you simply put a dab of glue on each side and put it right back together. It's no big deal, okay? They're, it's gonna happen. These are super fragile when they're, um, when they're not heated up. So you can you could drill a hole in these. You could stain them. They stain up just like a piece of wood wood. Wood wood? Wood wood. <laughs> wood, wood. Um, <clears throat> you can paint over them. So you can do anything that you would do to a normal uh, wood applique. Um, the only difference is when you heat them up, they are bendable. So you can wrap them around and they'll stick to anything. So they'll stick to glass, metal, wood, plastic, whatever. Um, but you must use wood glue with them. So you cannot use the mixed media glue uh, that I was just showing or E6000. You have to use some kind of wood glue. It could be Elmer's, it could be Gorilla Glue. We use Tide Bond. Doesn't matter what kind, white, yellow, doesn't matter. They'll stick to anything? Just as, they'll stick to anything. I'm gonna use one as a tattoo on my arm. Around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this one right here is number 1374. They're all numbered. Um, and again, they come in all shapes and sizes, but this is gonna go at the top of our um, mirror. Now, it may seem like this is a nice flat mirror. This is a nice flat mold. So why do I even have to heat it up? Even if you're putting it on a flat surface, you must heat it up, okay? They're, you just, anytime you're gonna use one of these, just know you're gonna have to heat it up. Yes, Brenda, we are selling those. Yes, here's another one. So this one is, this is the original one we were gonna put here, but once I decided to put these on, this became too big. Although, you can bend these in, and we're gonna, well, I guess I can, no, we're not gonna time tonight. Um, if you have a mold that doesn't fit, but it would fit if maybe these were just bent in a little bit, that's the whole purpose of these molds. They bend. Um, did I bring the trim up? I did. So how's our things looking? Pretty good? 
and give it another minute or two, we'll pop those out. Let me show you, this is just the best example of how these things work. This is a piece of trim that we're actually going to put along the top of the mirror. And just to show you. No! <laughs> brittle. I mean, it just breaks right off like Very nothing. Very brittle. Now. now, so you can use a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer, you can put them on a griddle, it doesn't matter how you heat them. Or oh. break them. <laughs> Actually, it didn't break. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's unusual. So this is just a low heat on a heat gun. Heat gun we got from Harbor Freight. Free stuff, Har Harbor, Harbor Freight. Freight, give us free stuff. But watch. Actually, I don't want to put this one on top that's too thin. But we'll get a thicker one. But as it heats up, it becomes pliable. What? Say what? Amy says it's going to make a huge difference on the mirror. Yes, it will. Oh, yeah. We're just decking this mirror. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. <laughs> So we're not going to be using this one, but I always think this is a good one to demo on because you can just see as it unfolds. So look, so now it's bendy, and if we wanted to, if we wanted to deck out our tight bond bottle, we could wrap it right around. Now, it will stay in that position as it cools down. And if it does that and you don't get your glue on or you have, you know, you don't have to work super fast. Heat um, it up again. Yep. Yeah. Just, you can reheat, cool down, reheat, cool down as many times as you need to. How long does it okay. take to cool down? So as long as it takes to become bendy, that's as fast as it's going to cool back to its normal state. So, um, you know, the thinner ones are going to bend, bend up real quick, and then one like this will take a little bit longer. Now right. let's put that off to the side, but when we roll that back up again, we're going to have to heat it up again to roll it up. Yeah, you can't, so it's already, I can't roll it. Like you see, it's like not, it's not bendy anymore. It's, so, it's already become brittle. All right, so let's take this and we want to get a baby wipe ready. <laughs> Cynthia says it's magic. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. So with this piece, we're not really using it as would you bend. We're actually using it as would you place. <laughs> but we still want to heat it up and we're going to put our glue. You want to heat it up first? So you can heat it up first. Put your glue on, you can put your glue on, heat it up. Uh, the, the key is the heat, the glue, and the, the material that the wood you've been made of all works together to make it adhere to any surface. I have a brush. Do you have a brush to yeah. glue? Oh, all right. Yeah. So do we want to heat it up first just to kind of show how this one bends? Sure. So this one will take a little longer. These are really good if you have drawers that have that curve in them, right? That you want to put something on. These will these will bend right to the curve. There's a couple um, would you bend Facebook pages out there in groups that if you're interested in this and want to see more, um, go join those groups. There's a would you bend creatives page. And then Solly Jo, um, who's the owner founder of Would You Bend, her page is um, Posh Chalk Interiors. She's in the UK. Um, she's a dang good furniture artist. You will just, you'll watch her for hours. <laughs> well, if you're anything like Pam, you will anyway. <laughs> All right, so do you see it getting, getting bendy? It is magic. It is. You're a witch. And if you hold this on one spot, you can scorch the wood. It's, you're not going to ruin it. You can still use it. Um, but you can you can scorch it if you get it too hot or too much heat in one spot. You can sand these. You can cut them. You can sand them. All right. So I think. So it's already sitting much flatter on that the top of that mirror. Yep. And let's... It's a big brush to glue. My end is clogged. 
Too big? Yeah. I bought a couple out here. Could you? Okay. Yeah, here's one. Probably better. Alright. So just put your glue all around, especially your edges. <coughs> we'll clean that up when we get it on. And it's a very porous material, so the glue, um, like it sucks right onto there. Yeah, don't be shy using the glue. Now just remember if you're gonna stain this and the piece that you're putting it on, the glue does not take up stain very well. So be ready to just clear up. With your baby wipes. Yep, any glue that kind of seeps out. Otherwise you will have kind of a weird, a weird stain pattern. We're painting this, so I'm not too concerned and I'm trying to rush because I know we're getting long on time. And we want to pop those resin ones out too. Last time I did this, I blew the top off, right? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Shot it across the room. Now, if you're doing like a piece of trim, you can put the glue right onto your, um, your project. But this one's so irregular, I didn't dare do that. Alrighty, flip it over. You want to heat it again? Or do you want to heat it once it's on? Yeah. Yeah, you always want to, you know, reheat it again, press it down. Because again, it's like the heat with all the, the different materials, the glue and the wood composite, just makes it uh, all kind of work together. Like you can feel it adhering. You still need to add one edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. some of this up so it's going to be hard to get in there sometimes like a q-tip even or if you can wrap your um... Malia Klein says you can use Elmer's wood glue max because it's stainable oh good tip it is but stain is always going to take differently to different materials so you may get a little bit of different color in there so what color are we painting the mirror? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. I haven't decided. I was thinking we painted a medium brown color. <laughs> well, aren't you boring? <laughs> you know, like a, like a cherry color. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure, and I didn't... Um, uh, prime this, but when I was cleaning it, man, it was just constantly coming back. I, I couldn't get the rag to stop coming back. Nasty. So it's probably going to bleed. Um, you can prime right over this. So I will probably, if I decide to, um, I'll just, you can boss over the whole thing. You know, you could have done that first too. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Don't matter. So there it is. How gorgeous. Let's move that. Is that on there? That's on there. But there it is. Probably want to heat it up a little bit more. So always kind of look at it like there's a few gaps over here. We'll just heat it up and press it down. Like anything, they're, they're super easy to use. Um, but you know, it just takes a little practice.
So benefits of would you bend uh, are many. Number one, obviously the curved surfaces and just the, the fact that they, they bend is, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find that. <laughs> and that it is stainable where the resin molds are not stainable. Um, now they're not, you know, you're not really gonna reuse one. So um, you're making the investment in the, you know, in the one piece and you're using it on one piece for the most part. Um, but if you feel uncomfortable with resin or paper clay and you don't want shrinkage, um, this, is, this is what you, you know, need to go to. And you don't have to bend them, so you can just use them on regular stuff. All right. And let's, they're very reasonably priced. <laughs> yeah. Very. Yeah. You would think they're like super expensive. Those are not. All right. So we probably could have done this uh, 10 minutes ago, but look. And I'm probably being way more careful than I have to be because these things are super sturdy. This was the amazing resin. And I usually, I try not to work a lot with the, um, the mold itself. I try to just bend, or I try not to, what do you call this? Like the, the casting part. I try to manipulate this rather than manipulate this. Is it still warm? A little bit. Yeah, as long as it's still warm, there's still a little bit of... And yet, so look, you can, I mean, it's still kind of bendy. Yeah, it still has a little bit of warmth in it. That means the process hardening is still going on. Now, because it's still bendy, we want to lay this on a flat surface. So here's the, remember the leaf we made earlier? And you can see how it's starting to curl up. So I'm probably just gonna put just like a mold over it. It doesn't have to be super heavy, just enough to keep it down. But you can see the difference. And it's probably, I don't know, oh, I guess it's, it's not really shrinking yet. But tomorrow, this will be a little bit smaller than that one. So that, guys. So now this one, we've got laying on a flat surface. It's very flat, it's not gonna shrink, it's not gonna bend. It's really nice. I mean, the resins cost a little bit more, but you really get, it's you know, they're easier to work with and once, once you get the feel of yeah. how to mix it properly. Oh, before we go. So here's the, the cup, and now you just basically take it out and keep reusing your cup. All right, my friends, we are at an hour. I know we always get yakking, <laughs> but um, hope you learned some stuff about molds. If you have questions, let us know. We'll do our best to answer them. We're not the uh, mold experts, but we're learning and we kind of showed you a little bit of everything tonight. So um, please do the things, get our video out there. We'll see you next Tuesday night at 6.15. Uh, I'm not sure the topic yet, but we'll do something fun. And I hope everyone has a fantastic week. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.